guitar practice session at 9324. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on. Hopefully it helps me to generate a routine, verbalize what I am trying to learn so that I can get it in my mind better and communicate it better, possibly providing information to others who are learning similar types of things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to practice the things that I am practicing here. I'm gonna be working with the Excel worksheet, which might be a little bit different layout than you've seen in the past and the thing that I might be able to provide that's a little bit different than what other people might be able to provide that is I'm trying to orientate everything so that it's going the same way so from my perspective from behind the guitar I have the top or heavy string on top and then I go top to bottom left to right I'm going to create the worksheet in the same way so you have the top or heavy string on top top to bottom, left to right, so that as I'm navigating on the guitar, I can move around in my Excel worksheet and visualize it without having to turn things around in my mind. And I'll also also reorientate my guitar on the screen so it looks like I'm left-handed and try to even get the fret lined up to the frets that we are working on, which will be like fret 12 over here, so that again, everything is lined up as cleanly as possible, possibly making it as easy to kind of see shapes, which is basically what I'm focused on most, uh, as easy as possible. Now we're gonna be going into the, to the Phrygian uh, once again, but I'm trying to break up my practice sessions possibly into smaller chunks working on different things because uh, if we take our hour session and break it down into 10 to 20 minute chunks, that's supposed to be better for retention. So I've got some other things that I'm going to basically jump back and forth from. I won't get to all of them, but I, I touch on just this idea of breaking down the fretboard, not just into one system of learning uh, the fretboard. We want to learn one system at a time, but ultimately we would like to visualize the fretboard different ways. And there's many different ways we can play the same scales on the fretboard. And if we can orientate our mind to be switching between them, then we can kind of, we'll end up with different patterns. So this is just a two note per string pattern that is playing out our, our, our notes on the fretboard. This is going to be a one spot on the guitar. I go into this a little bit and as part of the practice session, we'll take a look at this, meaning what we've mainly been looking at are the modes uh, in one key, typically C major and the related modes. And that's great because on the guitar, everything shifts up. That's why the patterns are so nice on the guitar, even more than so with the piano, because everything will shift up. That doesn't mean it's easy to shift everything up because your hand is still going to protest saying, this is where this pattern goes because I've learned it in this key. But theoretically, uh, you, can, you can shift up and down and it's a little bit more easy to visualize. Uh, but here we're going to try to do it in one place. So the other, the two ways that you want to switch in music, typically, if you're going from key to key in one song, for example, is I might be going from an A minor, say, to the relative C major, and then I'm always playing in the same key. I'm just changing the focal point. Maybe even more common is to keep the same focal point and then pivot around the different modes. And that's what I'm going to look at here, staying in one position at a time looking at, in this case, uh, the A as our focal point, and then switching the modes, which means that I can, I can take each of these shapes and analyze the shapes if I, as I go to an A Dorian versus a, uh, an, an, an uh, a Phrygian versus an A Lydian, and then I can start tinkering around with playing in one position on the guitar. What would happen if in the middle of a song or something I switched from one mode to the other mode, hoping that I'm still not tweaking someone's ear too bad because I'm still pivoting around the focal point of uh, the A, even though I'm going from mode to mode. Okay, and then we have then uh, the key. I didn't mess with this one too much, but I've been playing a lot in the key of C uh, and all the shapes should move up. So we can do the same thing now in another common uh, uh, key, which like is the key of G. It's very common to play in and all the related modes to uh, the key of G. So maybe in future presentations, I'm going to jump in to here and learn our same shapes, just moving them up to the key of G, which is going to have all the same patterns, all the same intervals. 
It's just that now we're going to try to position our finger different places on the guitar and see if we can resist the fact that our fingers are going to protest as we move around. Then we also, I looked at this one, I spent a little bit of time on this one where we started off on this one, whereas a lot of times it's very common for people to break out the guitar into this three shape, three string, three notes per string shape. And that's useful for like rock and roll players, people on a, that are playing fast on, on, I think on like an electric guitar that works particularly well because you can reach further up and have more opportunities if you're reaching further up. Uh, but it works for any style that you're playing on because now again, you're viewing the guitar from a different perspective. And so I try to say, okay, how can I fit this into the perspective that we're looking on? Remember that like if I looked at this shape, we're looking at it in terms of a house analogy and a, a hamburger barbell analogy. And this is what I would, I would call here shape number two. And this is shape number three. And you'll see that when I play this three note per string, it kind of moves up between those two shapes, which is nice because it breaks us out of the box. So this is one way if I can switch back and forth between seeing this and then somehow reorientate myself so I can switch back to playing and say, oh, I'm in, I'm playing three notes per string, which is taking me from what I would call position two to position three, and then reorientate myself in position three, switching back from a three note per string to two note per string. There's also other interesting things when we look at these different shapes, uh, meaning this shape, I can play basically any of the modes based on each of the strings, but I can also start on each, like if this is the C major, I could start on the second one and play the three note per string, except on the first note, right? So we'll get into that. I talk into, about that a little bit. I'm trying to kind of orientate that in my mind and how it might work for me and possibly therefore others. And uh, so we talk about that. And then of course I get into the Phrygian mode over here, counting at the bottom bit, which is important because I keep on skipping that because I run out of time. So now I'm gonna do that. And the bottom bit's important because you have the kink and the tuning or the fault line down here. And we'll practice all of our intervals down on that bottom part. And then at the end, I start just noodling around like we have been. I have been in the last couple things by basically just taking, these are all the different patterns of if I was to play chord progressions, if I just played three chords starting with the root as the first to make it sound like I'm in whatever key I'm in, in this case Phrygian that we're going to be playing in. And then I'm going to end it with the same one. So I didn't put a one at the end. So these are all the combinations starting on the one of whatever key we are in if we only had three chords without repeating any of the three chords, which you could obviously repeat them. And then I think this is useful to just trim down the practice and just try to play like three chords. So I'm not an expert. I'm not like, so I don't play anything like beautiful on it or right. I'm just trying to think what might I do or how could I convert this three, three chords into the Phrygian to know which chords I'm going to play. And then, and then how are the different ways I can play them? That's what I do at the end of this session. And, and then just, uh, and then just say, well, I could arpeggiate, I could put it up on the top of the guitar. I can play them in different positions. I can invert the chords and whatnot. So remember, to me, this is what messes people up. There's too many things. It's like trying to decide what you want to wear in the morning when you have a closet that is infinitely large. You're, you're never going to pick anything, which is why I don't even go into my closet. I just take it. I just wear the. I just wear the same kind of t-shirt <laughs> which is kind of, i gotta wear, this, wear the same thing but is it, but so the, but if we narrow it down even and if you narrow it down even to just like three notes at a time if you add rhythm if you add the ability to arpeggiate hammer-ons hammer-offs all the other kind of things there's still an infinite number of things you can do with just like three chords right and i think that's where people get lost they can't you can't get creative with something when you're trying to pick something out of an infinitely large closet or whatever, right? You have to trim it down to be able to get creative with a, the limitation is what adds to the creativity. So I'm thinking that this kind of thing, 
formally putting down all the different combinations and then locking yourself into doing something with a limited amount of options will make more creativity and also help us to kind of play around with how how can we play different projections if I'm thinking of myself in a different mode. Continuing on with what I would call shape number four, looking at mode number three, that being the Phrygian mode. However, I'm going to try to be breaking out our hour long or so practice session into smaller 10 to 20 minute chunks because that's supposed to be a more optimized length of time to spend on one particular thing in order to retain the information. So what I've done is I've made a couple other uh, tabs down below of things that I can toggle back and forth and uh, practice working on. They all have to do with kind of patterns on the fretboard in part because, not because that's the only thing I particularly need to be working on. There's many different things that I can basically work on and need improvement on, but these are the things that I think I might be able to offer something that's a little bit different than what other people are offering that you might be able to find out there and uh, learn from because I can basically provide uh, the fretboard, hopefully in a way that if people don't can't read uh, music or even make it easier than uh, reading tabs and try to make it as clear as possible for just navigating and looking for patterns uh, on the fretboard. I just think that's what I can do that's, a, again, a little bit different maybe than what other people are doing. So uh, a couple of these other pattern tabs, if I go to the lean back pattern. Now, remember, when we look at these patterns on the guitar, it's natural for us to break the guitar into like uh, four to five fret chunks. That's probably what the guitar was designed to do because we want to have everything within a hand st stretch at any particular point. However, we can break the guitar into different patterns looking at the same, the same music theory. We're looking at the same scales, but instead of breaking it down into a four to five chunk pattern here, we can look for different patterns like this one's a two note per string pattern, which kind of leans back. So, so that one, it doesn't sit in one place. Your hand is going to be moving across the fretboard to get that pattern, but that will break you out of the boxes a little bit and it'll give you a different rhythm as you play two notes per string instead of three notes per string or three and two notes per string or something like that which are the traditional patterns when we break the fretboard into five chunks obviously what we would like to do is be able to integrate some of these different patterns in and switch our mind from going like to from a two note per string pattern to the the, the pattern of five different patterns on the fretboard and so on and the more we're able to do that, that by definition to me is learning the fretboard. That's a form of learning or understanding the fretboard. The tendency that I used to have, and I think that many people have is like, I know we start to think, I know how I, how I do something and it works. I know something that works. This other person's doing this other thing and it's different, it works for them. But what I need to do is convert what they're doing to what I'm doing so that I can see it my way because I know my way works. And that's fine, we could do that, but obviously what we'd like to do is be able to see it both ways and be able to reconcile the difference between and explain it, right? What are they doing? What is it different than what I'm doing? How can I, like a bank reconciliation, sorry for the accounting term, like, you know, this is what the bank's doing, this is what I'm doing, there's a different result, here's the reconciliation, here's the difference, here's how you get from here to there, I can do it either way, right? That's what we, if, if we did that, then obviously we would know the stuff better, right? So that's trying to switch my mindset personally to, to do that more. So then uh, this is a, the other way we can look at it. We've been looking at basically the key of C and related modes up and down the fretboard and trying to play each shape from each of those modes, which is great because the guitar is, is symmetrical or, all the shapes are movable, which isn't the same in like a piano. So, so people probably are saying, well, look, you're spending all your time on the same shapes, on the same C major and related modes. And yeah, I am because, because those, but those, all those shapes are movable, right? So once we know that we can then move the shapes to other areas of the guitar. So now I'm going to try to integrate that differently. Now, the other thing that we've been doing is looking at, I, I believe the related modes, related and complement modes are the two ways to say it. 
So if I if I was playing in a particular song, it makes sense for me to play like if I'm playing an A, then I can switch to another mode like D Dorian, right? And then if I play that long enough, uh, it'll sound like it sound like I'm in D Dorian. And it's a related mode, all, they're all the same notes, right? But the other way I can do it is say I'm going to be playing an A, say I'm playing an A minor, uh, then I can switch to A major. Which is, you could, that's the other way. So that's, so, so now on this tab, what I'm going to do is try to stay in one place. And I'm just going to be switching, not from, not to the related modes, but to the complement modes. So I want to try to say, okay, if, and that's really useful to say if I start in the same place and I played the minor, then then I play the major from the A major, and then I play the Dorian and the Phrygian all from the same place, then we'll start to learn in one particular place how I can build each of the different modes around the same root note, which is useful if you're playing in a song because that's the other way that you might switch from from one scale to another you keep the root the same but you switch from mode to mode which means that i have to know the different the different patterns under that mode and obviously again if i know the different patterns under the modes that's also what allows me to build the chords right that's what allows me to the modes tell me what intervals are in the chords uh and whether i pay a major or my so that's another thing i'm going to think about working on and then we've got then the key of G. Now G is the other most, like I play in A minor most of the time, which is like C, C major is the other mode in there in A minor. G is a very common, uh, a common uh, scale to play in. So, and it, it's, it's because it has all the open notes are still good in it. And it's, it has, the only thing different from the C is that it has uh, that, that, uh, G flat in it, uh, so so that's what we'll. Uh, I'm sorry, it has a. Well, I could call it G. It's it's an F sharp, F sharp or G flat. So we're gonna. So that's so so that's another. I can apply. It'll be the same exact shapes, but instead of us practicing in the key of C, we can move everything up and practice basically in the key of G and throw in which is another, and, and, and it does make a big difference because even if I know all the shapes, when I start to play in a different key, you'll start to say your hand is gonna say, that doesn't feel right, I'm in the wrong spot. And it's like, dude, hand, it's the same thing, it's the same shape, just move it up a bit. It's like, dude, but I'm used to being over here as the hand is saying, you're like, just, you know what to do, right? So that's, so we can play, we can mess with that. And then also we have this one, which is another common way to see the fretboard and that's going to be a three note per string shape. So a three note per string shape, instead of me being in one position right here, like, and I could play three notes per string, which is going to, which is going to be a lean forward. You saw the two note per string tends, tends for us to move backwards because of the intervals. If I have play three notes per, right, and, and the shape that I have right here has two notes mostly mostly three notes per string but it doesn't span this far it only it only spans like five frets uh total you only you only play four frets at a time basically in our normal positions here and here we're spanning one two three four five frets so we're allowing ourselves three notes per string spanning more than reaching our finger a little bit further our pinky and what that tends to do is pull us to the right when you look at these shapes. So, so now, if I think about this shape, this is a very common thing, way to play it. And the problem when we try to integrate that to what we're doing is everything is in one shape here. And this is gonna make me travel up the fretboard, which again is great because it cuts me out, it takes me out of the box that I'm looking at. So if I look at this one, for example, this box, this orange box right here, represents what I would call uh, shape number two, or in the caged system, you might call it the bar shape, the E, the E major uh, shape. And then, and then this box right here, it would be 
what I would call then, of course, shape uh, number three. Shape number three is going to be, you know, up here. And you might call like that the D shape from the caged system. If I looked at the three note per string shape going from like this C up, it's going to straddle those two different shapes, right? It's going to take, and that's kind of good because if I can switch back and forth and see like this little pattern right here and see how it integrates between what I'm nor normally playing position two this way and position three this way, it'll, it'll allow me to go back and forth possibly between visualizing the fretboard those two different ways. So for example, so if I look at this, this shape from the C and play the C major in this shape, now it's gonna be boom, boom, boom. This shape, by the way, is easier to play if you're higher up on the fretboard a little bit because you're gonna reach further with your pinky than you're, than you're otherwise used to doing if you're not playing that. This is also why it's easier sometimes to play if you're playing this stretchy, stretchy format, maybe to hold your guitar more in a classical bit because you can reach up, up a little bit higher sometimes on the fretboard, your thumb moving back on, on the back of the guitar back further so that you can reach. Uh, and if you do that, you should be able to, if you, if you, you should be able to reach up here too. And so, you, and we can practice like hammer-ons with your pinky to try to get that. And when you do that, you'll tend, you'll see, you'll tend to pull your neck up a little bit and that'll be easier to reach. And so then, so then we could do that here. And so this little shape is pretty neat because, because you have the what I'm going to call I'm going to call this now this shape I'm going to call it uh, the uh, the pillars the three pillars and the reason I'm going to call it the three pillars is because like there should be actually three of them if I started from like this G you could see right here there's actually th three pillars so this is actually in the middle of the three pillar shape which would be like this and and so if you see that shape notice i can play that shape like this way which is like the two hamburgers way we were calling it a hamburger before or and then up here or if i can reach so if i start to see it if i start to see that shape i'm going to start to play up and back on these on the three pillars right and i can play it i can move my finger up to do it or I can reach with my pinky uh, to do it is the is going to be the general idea. So this shape is always going to be it's always going to be like we saw before. It's always going to be the same. So we've got if I started this one up top, we're going to say let's cut and then paste. It's going to be the the C. This is this now. The other thing that's cool about this shape, by the way, is that I can start from any note. And the note that I'm starting on will tell me the mode that I'm in. So if, if I'm playing in C and C in the key of C and related modes, and I start on the C, then clearly, or I start on the one, then I'm gonna clearly be playing in a major mode. If I start on the two from the top string, I can clearly name this shape, what I would call mode number two, the Dorian mode. And I can just find, I have to then find the shape of the Dorian, which will lean up this way in the Dorian. And then if I was to go to shape number, if I was to start it on the E, obviously I would be playing from here, leaning forward, three notes per string, that would give me my Phrygian shape. So that's pretty cool because when we break the guitar into our five shapes, you will remember that there's only five shapes and there's seven modes. So we actually have, we can't really name the five shapes by mode that way, although we still do because I'll name you know the sh the shape whether it's going to be a major shape or a minor shape but this way it's pretty it's nice and clear right i could say well i'm starting on the first i'm starting on i'm starting on the the, the fifth therefore i'm playing mixolydian if i play the three notes per string so that's great but the the thing that's kind of wonky about it though is that you're traveling up the neck so it's not as easy to locate where you are going this way on the on the neck right so anyways so i'm going to start it's starting at the middle of what I'm going to start calling the three pillars and then it goes to the bottom of what I call the three pillars and then it goes to and then it always shifts up 
when I go to the next one. So even though I'm not in the kink of the tuning, it naturally shifts up. I'm not in the earthquake zone to here. And so that's going to be a shape that we've already seen. That's what I'm going to be calling uh, the house double stop shape, right? And then the bottom of the house double stop shape. And then, it, and then if you were to keep on going on this, it's shifting up this time, not because it's a natural shift up. It would not have shift up except for the kink in the tune in the fault line. So I have to account for the fault line and it goes in. Now this is the double stop square shape. So those are, those are the shapes that we have in it. Although this one actually reaches up and it has, so if I continued this one up uh, to see, I can repeat that D, uh, D, E, F up top, and then it would go to the G. And you can see once I get to the G, that's where you can see it's actually a pillar. So the shape's kind of interesting the way it, the way it goes through because I'm, because I'm not even seeing really the full pillar shape here. But then if I get up to uh, this G, so now I can repeat on this G, there's the full pillar. So that's a kind of interesting shape because you can see, you can play a hamburger shape here and a hamburger shape and move it up that way or so so that's kind of a a neat shape now the thing that's a little weird like if i try to fit this into the shapes that we've been playing uh notice notice where this shape is starting it's starting in the square right it's starting on the on the on the right side of what i would call the house in the house analogy so it's actually breaking the house kind of in half which is which is normally the starting point for the c if i was in like say position two but then it goes up c d and instead of going back to this e back here which we would normally do because we usually don't reach past the the shape having because if i reached up here it'd be one two three four it's going to be more of a stretch so we usually go back to here so this note and this note is the same so by by not going backwards and reaching up instead to this note which is quite common by the way if you're noodling around because that's the third so hammering being able to ha we're being able to hammer on to uh the third which is it's kind of a it's kind of a a useful thing to have because getting back to this third is kind of a pain sometimes but in any case so 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 now so now that's what makes us lean up so now we're not so if i pick that third i'm not going to go back to this one anymore right because i already because that would be doubling up on it instead i've already got that third and that's why i'm moving up to this one so it actually breaks the whole box in half right so it breaks it in half and now i'm up here and then I play up here and then here. And then again, instead of instead of going now, because I'm leaned up, this is where my pointer finger is now. I'm not going to go back to this A back here. I'm going to reach up to once again, this A, which is what's leaning it forward. So now it's leaning forward. And then I'm not going to go to this B out here. Instead, I'm going to I'm going to go back to the B back here. And so now we're kind of leaning forward. And now you can see that we're on the inside of the box. So it's kind of interesting where this shape starts. It starts on the right side of the house where the C is. And then once, once I go through the shape, I'm going to be, I'm going to include that side of the house. Once I'm down here, right? The box of the house. And then it goes into do, and then we've, we've had one cycle and then now the cycle's repeating, but it's kind of interesting now because now if I continue this shape on, I'm not starting from the same point, all right? I'm not starting from from this side of the box. I could, if I started from this side of the box, I would end up with the same shape. But if I can think of it as continuing from where I was before, now I start, now I'm, I'm just continuing, I was here, and now I'm going to the next one. Then, then I go here and, and now I have a different, that's why it's resulting in a different shape, right? If I started from this C, it would be, I would say I could start over from here, it'd be the same shape. It would be just like this shape, boom, boom, 
boom, boom, boom, right? But uh, that's not what's happening because I actually ended off on this shape as my second note in my three string, my three note per string shape, and therefore I end up with this different shape, right? Because now I have to go back here instead of going up to here, like I normally would. If I started on that C, I would go up to here. So anytime you see the C, like I could imagine I'm going to create the same shape as though it was on the top string and create that same line of boom, 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 boom. Or I could imagine that I'm continuing on from the top shape, which means that, that now it's the second note in my three strings, right? It goes boom, boom, and then this shape happens underneath it. And then when I get to the next shape down here, it's actually the box is on the right side uh, now. So now the C is the ending off point of of the box. So it's kind of interesting. And I've and now I've traversed through in terms of these two shapes, I've traversed through what I would call shape number two, which is where my starting point is. And then and then I've traversed through uh, the bottom of shape uh, number uh, number three or the D shape. So. I'm going to start to analyze that. This is just a quick kind of analysis of it. I'm going to try to start, and I'm just trying to get my mind around it, right? And trying to think about how that can, how I can integrate that into this shape. And we'll, later on, we'll do maybe the same kind of interval calculations in it as well. The other thing that's interesting with this shape, by the way, is that I could say, okay, well, what if I went to the Dorian shape then? Well, if I went to the Dorian, I could start on the Dorian and create my three note per string shape there, which of course would be here. And I just pick my three notes that are in my key. It'd be boom, boom, boom. And then we would go to here. And now my three notes per string F, G would be here. And then we got, we have boom, boom, boom. That's where my pillar is, my pillar shape is, right? And, and then so on. But I can also look at this shape that I just did right here in the key of C and say, what if I, what if I start on the second note and I say, I'm just going to say, now I'm going to play Dorian within the three note per string C shape, meaning I'm just going to say for the first, for the first line of the string, I'm only going to have two notes because I'm going to start on the D right. And then go boom, boom, and then go down here do do my normal pattern. So I could use the C, this three note per string C pattern to play any other mode if I just start on whatever mode I'm in, the second, the third, the fourth, and so on, and then just go from there using this same shape. So those are just, a, again, there's, you can see this types of stuff an infinite number of ways. By the way, the, the other way that you could look at this is to say, well, why do I have to stop at three strings? I could go like four strings. What if I did that? If I started on the C and I went, and I and and to do this normally you would shift your finger up, right? Because I can't reach past th too much past three strings. But I can kind of reach like if I'm up here, I can reach that F, right? So why can't I go four strings up? I could, or I could I could shift like this and still think of it as four strings because what's going to happen is it's going to make me lean forward again because so what if I did that it would be like all right now I'm going to go C D E F whether I shift my thing my pointer up or I move up here where's the next one then it's going to be G so this is another way that I I can maybe more rapidly move up the guitar this way by saying I'm going to play four strings right one two three four which is going to leave me here one two three four gives me to the C which is going to leave me here right D E F D E F G is out here, and that leads me here. So you you can totally do that, right? There's nothing. No one like really. I think I haven't seen anybody doing like tutorials on that. But if you saw, that's one way you could see the guitar, right? Because and if you did it that way, you're going to come up with different patterns, and that might be again a way that you can kind of move up the fretboard in a systematic pattern type of way moving you in between these box shapes, taking you more rapidly between these box shapes, which just because of the mechanics and the way you're thinking of the guitar will naturally tend you to do different things. And my, I, I think that's how I see it in any case. 
So we'll play with those more later. Let's go back to this one though. And last time I was on, I, I started to this E and I only got like to this E right here. I, I went from here to here. So let's go from here to here this time. See if I can do this a little bit more quickly. And so let's try a joke first though. We're gonna break this stuff up, break it into chunks. Here's my practice joke session. Have you have you ever heard somebody exclaim like totally in panic? Holy crap. And it's like, dude, calm down. And you know, because now that you've identified the problem, we can fit you can fix it with proper dietary intake, you know? Resulting in nice, healthy, solid crap. Crap free from holes. You you know what I mean? I mean, there's there's no point there's no point panicking about the unhealthy indications of your holy crap. It's, it's better to just accept the facts of the situation and take, you know, that you got holy crap and then take the best steps you can to remedy the problem. Possibly more fiber, for example. Anyways, that was really stupid. Okay. Okay. That was kind of funny. Come on. That was great. All right, I'm going to, I'm continuing on Phrygian. Now I'm going to continue. We did last time from this side to this side. We're looking at Phrygian, which I call mode number three. Remembering that I'm going to use the mode numbers that are related to the major uh, scale or major mode, otherwise known as mode number one. Therefore, if the major scale is mode number one, the third of, mo of the major scale is the Phrygian mode. So as we look at Phrygian, I'm going to have the related positions on the left which the notes will change as we go through the different modes that, but I'm going to be using the same numbering system based on the major scale to name the numbers of the modes, which will be useful because we know that on the numbers of the modes related to the major scale, which ones are major and minor. And if we know the particular mode number, we will also be able to build the chords beyond just the major or minor third because the only way we know that is basically based on the modes because those are telling us which intervals are different the phrygian mode has a it's a minor mode indicated by the minor third it has the second which is different than uh the minor it's more it's more minor than the main minor now we also note that i'm going to be up here in pass fret 12 and we can do the same thing over here in open position, open position being deceptively complex, given the fact that we have a different fingering system as we shift our fingers up, which is kind of embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing to like admit the fact that I play over here more than any other position and I probably know it least in terms of how the shape works because of the way, because of the open positions are kind of different. Uh, so. It's worthwhile to go back there and practice it, if I, which I've been neglecting a little bit as I go through here because I kind of forget. All right, so now we're going to be on, so what's the second? So we have the, the E here, octave there. So we're, let's go to uh, the second from here. So the second is the interval that's the special interval for the Phrygian. It's going to be a, two, a one note away uh, minor second. So one note away minor second. The inverse, therefore, is 12 minus 1, which is an 11 note away major 7. And so, and I know that because if I look at this F over here and I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I get to the E. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, wait a sec. I also want to say that the second of the Phrygian what mode is that or what chord would I play if I built a chord off of that F? Would it be major or minor? Well, I could say, well, the Phrygian is the third mode, which means it's two steps up from the first of the major or Ionian scale. Therefore, I can do a little formula, which would be three minus one is two plus the second that we're on is four. That gives me absolute mode number four. So I know that in the major scale the fourth is a major chord it would be a, the one four five are major chords and so that means that this is a major mode the lydian mode which is a major mode where does it live in terms of our analogy so our typical analogies are the house analogy 
where the it's always going to be on the bottom right of the box. That's where Phrygian lives. Uh, and uh, that's going to be where it lives. The Phrygian, what was the other thing I was trying? If I was to build a chord on it, it would be a major chord, a major triad. If I wanted to build uh, the triad on it. Uh, so that's what, that's what I was going to do. So is there any, oh yeah. And then in terms of the pentatonic, it is, uh, it is outside of the hamburger. Here's our hamburger shape for the five note pentatonic. And we would have to add this note to the pentatonic to pick it up. So if I saw my shapes in terms of the seven note house analogy, and I wanted to reduce it down to a five note pentatonic, then typically I would have to, I would only play these outer bits of the house here and I would remove the, 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 the Lydian on the bottom right of the house box. Uh, if I was playing in terms of the five note pentatonic, I would be in my hamburger shape here and I would have to add what I would think of as a cap to the hamburger, the bill of the hamburger, the baseball cap pointing forwards. I had to tack that on. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to say we're on the third of the third uh, is going to be where, 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 where was I here? Oh, I'm down here. The third. All right. So the third is going to be a, a three note away minor third has to be a minor third because it's a minor mode and the third defines the mode. How do I know it's three notes away? Because I can say this is five, four, three. So three notes away, inverse 12 minus three would be uh, nine. That would be a nine note away, major six. So if I see that shape, I wanna see, see that shape as a minor third, unless it's across the fault line. And then at the inverse, bottom to top, nine note away, and it would be major. The inverse of a minor is a major. We also know that the third of mode number three, Phrygian is three minus one is two plus the third three, which is five, that's gonna be the mixolydian. I know that in relation to the major scale, the one, four, five are majors, therefore the mixolydian is a major mode. Where does it live? It lives, if I'm thinking about the, the house analogy, the seven note house analogy, it's gonna be not in the house because it's, it's gonna be, even though it's a major mode, it hangs out with the minor because it has the minor seven. So it's in the two note per string flat over here and it's and then sometimes it's in the double stop part next to the uh the the dorian mode and in terms of the barbell hamburger analogy it's in the meat of the hamburger as we can see here and that meat of the hamburger that center of the hamburger like little shape is the same under both the seven note per string house analogy and the hamburger barbell analogy all right let's go to the next one we're going to go to the fourth the fourth so the fourth of mode three phrygian is a uh the fourth of phrygian is a five note away perfect fourth as normal how do i know that because the difference between these two strings is five that's five notes away perfect fourth Inverse 12 minus five is seven, seven notes away, perfect fifth. The perfects are inverse of each other. So anytime I see two strings stacked on top of each other, unless it's over the fault line, that's gonna be a five note away, perfect fourth. And the inverse bottom to top, seven note away, uh, perfect fifth. We also know the fourth of mode number three, Phrygian is three minus one, which is two plus four is six. That would be mode number six, Aeolian, or the main minor mode. I know that the sixth of the major scale is a minor mode. So if so, that's how I know it's going. This so that's one way I could know it's going to be a minor because the two, three, six are minors. The sixth mode, if I see it as absolute mode number six, is a minor. More precisely, it's the main minor, the minor scale, and that means where does it live in the house analogy? It's not in the house because it's a minor. It's going to be in the two note per string flat, uh, as we can see here, or it will be in uh, the, the, the double stop part of the double stop house. In terms of the hamburger analogy, it's in the meat 
of uh, the hamburger. As we can see here, the hamburger would look like this, but the bottom bit has been shifted up because of the fault line. All right, then we're gonna go to the next one, which is gonna be the fifth of mode three Phrygian is gonna be boom. The fifth is gonna be back here. Now that one, we have now crossed over the fault line. So normally you would think it would be back another one but has been shift up due to the due to the fault line here so that shape then is going to be a seven note away perfect fifth which i can count up thusly five down here and then i have to go up to fault line to get to ten nine eight seven seven note away perfect fifth twelve minus seven is five therefore the inverse is a five note away perfect fourth so when i see that shape because it's over the fault line that's going to be a uh, a seven note away perfect fifth inverse five note away then perfect fourth the fifth of mode number three phrygian is three minus one is two plus five uh is seven that gives me mode number seven and i know that the seventh of the related major scale is the funny diminished one that we oftentimes stay away from but has its uses otherwise known as the locrian uh mode where does the locrian live in the seven note house analogy it's in the top basement of the house here and if we went from a seven note to a five note pentatonic that's the one that we would remove only playing the outer part of the house on the top of the house and then the inner one on the smaller part of the house so we would remove the top left corner and the bottom the top right <laughs> we would be removing the top left and the bottom right corner in terms of the five note uh hamburger analogy then it wouldn't be included in the pentatonic because of course the the lydian is the one we would remove and you remember that we had to add the cap on the top of the hamburger and that means we have to also add something to the bottom left to support the added weight of the cap to the right ending up in our hamburger being like a z an extension to the top of the bun uh, to the right extension of the bottom of the bun to the left in order to compensate. All right, let's go to the sixth. And then we have the sixth of mode number three, uh, Phrygian, which is going to be boom here. Once again, we're still over the fault line. So it's a little, it's a little bit wonky because it's a minor six and it looks like that shape would be a major six, I believe, if it wasn't over the fault line. So we have to get used to that fault line thing. How do I know that? Because if I go, it would be five and then 10 up here, nine, eight. So it's only eight notes away, eight note away, minor six, inverse, 12 minus eight, four, and therefore the inverse would be a four note away, major third. So going from top to bottom, eight note away, minor six, bottom to top, four note away, major uh, third. And the sixth of mode number three, Phrygian is three minus one is two plus six, is eight there's only seven modes eight minus the seven modes is one and we of course know that in the major scale the first of the major scale is a major chord we would build a major chord on the one four five therefore it's a major chord more specifically it's the ionian mode otherwise known as the full major scale which is the intervals we're probably most familiar with having only perfects and major intervals with no minor intervals within them where does it live in the house analogy? Of course, it's in the house. It's in the penthouse of the house looking towards the ocean uh, up here. And uh, in terms of the hamburger barbell analogy, it's in the bottom left of the hamburger, which you might be able to see more clearly over here. It's the support, main support, bottom left of the hamburger. Even if you put the cap on top, you need the added support of that major to hold up the hamburger. And then we're gonna go, I, I just watched something on YouTube about a hamburger that was made with that like Japanese wogu beef or something that has like 60% fat. It's so marbled that it has, and the whole hamburger shriveled up into a, <laughs> they ground the steak that was mostly fat up into the hamburger to see if it would taste like a really expensive cause it's really a marbled. Uh, and it was like, I don't know, dude like uh, if that doesn't look like it was designed to make a hamburger i'm all i like marbling but there's that's too much they've gone too far they've gone too far with the marbling the 
the hamburger should not look white because of all the fat. That's I mean, maybe I don't I don't know. I'll still not that I wouldn't eat the a steak like that, but I'm just saying it just seems seems like it's gone a little too far. Is all I'm saying. Anyway, uh, let's go to the next one. We're going to the seventh. Uh, the seventh is going to be a 10 note away minor seventh because it's a minor mode. Once again, you would think it would be back here to get to the minor seventh, but no, because we're going over the fault line uh, here. So this is going to be, how can I know that? It's going to be five and then 10 because of the kink in the tuning or the fault line. And uh, inverse 12 minus 10 is two, which would be a two note away um, major second. The inverse of a minor is a major. So if I see that shape over the fault line, top to bottom, 10 note away major seven, bottom to top, two note away, wait, 10 note away minor seven, bottom to top, two note away major second. Okay, and that brings us back home to the Paradise City where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Won't you take me home? Uh, wait a sec. It's hard. I can't really finger that because of the guitar. Uh, I'm on the acoustic here. There it is. Anyway, so now maybe I should go back uh, the other way. But maybe I should do something in between here. Let's try a joke. Break things up for the practice problem. Uh, you know, it's it's well known that hippies often don't shave their armpits. And I kind of get that, to be honest, you know, with a with a with a little bit of laziness and the and, you know, the just let it flow kind of thing. You're like, whatever. But these days there, there's some there, there seems to be a new trend of people like actually dyeing their armpits, crazy colors like red or yellow or something. Right. So so not only are you but it seems a little strange to me. Right. That seems because because it kind of defeats the whole the whole idea of, of being lazy and just letting it flow, man, because like dyeing your, dyeing your armpit hair would take more work than actually shaving your armpits, you know? I mean, that's even, that's more labor intensive. And, he, and even worse is the fact that in order to actually dye your armpits some crazy color, you probably have to wash them, right? You'd have to wash your armpits. And, and obviously that's strictly prohibited in the orthodox hippie in the orthodox hippie cultures you know so i don't know i don't know what's going on with kids today i can't explain what's happening all right that wasn't funny i'm gonna go back to let's do the another one of these and as an interim exercise so let's imagine this time i'm on i'm gonna try to stay on just the a and then convert, uh, and then convert through the different modes from an A major to the A Dorian to the Phrygian. So if I was on this A, this is what I would call, uh, if I was gonna be in the major, I'm on this A and I'm on the major, this is what we would call uh, position number uh, two. I would call it position number two. You might call it an A, like a, a major, uh, an E major from the caged shaped position right It'd be an e major type uh, of shape and uh and and so so I'd, so that'd be like boom 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 all right so i just went one one time through to get to here now let's say well what if i then switch that to the dorian so now we're like now we're on the dorian let's see if i can copy and paste and say Dorian, same spot. And we're like, so now I, I still want to maybe play my song, but now I'm still want to like have people feel like it's in the key of A, like, so I didn't switch too much, but now it got kind of a little bit darker. The Dorian being kind of like, I guess the lightest of the, of the, of the heavy minors, cause it has two major intervals in it. So if I look at the difference here, now I'm in a, in a minor scale instead of a major scale. So, 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 so that's, and then if I compare to the minor, it has the major six in it. So, so my, so if I was to play this one, this is what I would call position number three, uh, would position 
Position number three is what I would uh, typically call this position. You might also call it an, an A uh, shape type of position. Wait, that's not right. It would be a, a D shape type of position because, and by the way, why would that be? This is where it gets confusing on the cage thing because I'm on the door end now. That means that the related, uh, the related Ionian or major, which is what we named the system on, would be G. And then you can see if I find my G here, that would be okay. If I, I build that, that's my G shape here or this little triangle shape. So you might call it like a D shape type of thing. And so, so what's going to be the, the pattern here, shape number three? Right, so I can kind of, so then I can kind of compare that. I can try to switch my song between an A major possibly and then an A Dorian. And, it, and because it has the same root, maybe I can pivot around the root. And that's another way that you might play, kind of try to put in different, uh, different, different patterns or scales into a song. And then, and then we're gonna say, okay, let's, I'm gonna copy this stuff down. So I haven't, I don't have like a routine for this yet. So I'm kind of choppy on how I wanna do this. So let's say we did the A like this, then, then we go to the next one, Phrygian. So if I played the Phrygian, uh, this has that distinctive second in it and what is what I would call position number four. You might simply call it like the Phrygian position if you started on the top note because this is the note that is distinctive to the Phrygian if you're looking at the uh, the caged system, I can say, well, what's the related Ionian? It's going to be that F. The F is right there. If I lean it back, you see uh, the C shape. So you could call this, you know, like a, a C shape uh, type of position from a caged shape position. So if I play it then through here. So again, I could try to switch that and say, okay, I'm playing from the major that I started with and then possibly go to a minor mode like a Phrygian or a Dorian remembering that the Phrygian has the distinct it's a minor mode so I can compare it to the minor scale it has one interval different than the minor scale that being of course this one which would be the minor second which means in terms of whole steps and half steps it's going to have a different half step going into it and a different step going out of it to get us back into the normal pattern. And then if I went into the Lydian, same thing on the Lydian. So I'm not gonna say paste, here's the A on the Lydian shape, and then paste on the Lydian shape here. So now I'm going, okay. So the, the Lydian shape is the major shape. Also, you can see the shape is still shape number, what I would call shape number four. But now, now it's like the shape would begin back here on the fourth, right? This was shape number four that began on the A. Now this is shape number four that begins uh, back on, on the fourth fret instead of the fifth, fifth fret, G sharp or A flat. And so, and so, and, and I might call, and so, so you might call then, this is still a shape number four, but if you named it on the, on the caged system, you'll see that the related Ionian is now an E. So that would be the major scale. And then the E is right there. So, so if I made like, you could still see, I have like my C shape going up to uh, the E there now. So it would still be like a C shape, but it's been shifted up one and to the related major, which is now an E. Uh, so you have that. And then if I play this one out, we're going to say we start on the second note now. And then now I have to shift back. Now that's going to sound more major-y because I have this leading tone. That's one big thing on the majors. You've got that leading tone that goes back in. I can compare this to the major now because it's a major mode, meaning it has a major third. And the one different interval from the major scale is this is actually labeled wrong. It should be the it should be the augmented fourth, but you can call it augmented fourth or a diminished uh, fifth 
flat five. Uh, so I should change my formula to, to kind of switch between those two, but, but I need a fourth here. So that's why I can just change the name. So that's where my worksheet isn't perfect. And then we can go to the Mixolydian and say, okay, what if I play pivot around this A on uh, the Mixolydian? So now the, the Mixolydian is once again, a major mode. And uh, within the Mixolydian, this is what I would call position number five uh, for the Mixolydian and position number five if I looked at the related major now, it's the D to this Mixolydian. And so you can see that from a cage shape position, that would be an A shape. So if you build this shape on the cage shape uh, shapes, that would be an A. And then we're going, so now this one, this is by the way, the only major shape that doesn't, that doesn't start on the second note. You'll recall that the two other shapes on what I would call position number two and uh, and then position number four start on the second note. Mixolydian actually doesn't have the note right in front of it. Why? Because it, its distinctive interval is that minor seven, meaning it doesn't have the leading tone. It's the only major that doesn't have that leading tone going back home, which makes it gives it that ending off at least as a more of a minor sound at the end at least. <laughs> And then of course we have the minor. So it's kind of nice that the, that the Mixolydian and the minor are kind of next to each other. Those are two modes that are kind of fun to go back and forth between and is often done in like a bluesy type of situation. So we could say, all right, now we can go to the minor mode. Du, 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 and then go du, 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 here and say, now we go back and forth between those two and that would be the minor, which we're probably most familiar with, which, which is what I would call uh, the position number one. You might call it a G-shaped position because the related major now is going to be uh, the C, which if I built a chord from is like that G shape. So you could see that and, it, and that would be. So you could, you, right, we could switch back and forth. So, so maybe, you know, it might be useful to kind of pick like two of these and then try to play within each of those different uh, different modes. Maybe I'll come up with some practice exercises to play within each of those different modes and then see if we can switch back and forth. These two, Mixolydian and Minor, being a good two to kind of start that with because the Mixolydian, if you play it in like a bluesy context, that third is often what is being played with which is basically kind of taking you in between the major and the minor as, as well as the seventh is often being played with, which is kind of taking you between, between uh, like, a, like a, major, a major seven and a minor seven, a major mode and a mixolydian or minor mode, right? Those are the two things or two distinct things that you can kind of uh, play with. And then as we do that, we can kind of then, then pinpoint the distinctive factors between the different between uh, the different modes. Okay, so let's go back over here. And let's see if I can go back the other way. I'm getting a little tired here. Let's see if I can go for go back this way. So let's try to compare everything to this E I'm back into now the the third, uh, the Phrygian. So we're back to the Phrygian. So let's try to compare everything to this one going back the other way. So if I go back behind that one, that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a seventh. So the seventh of the Phrygian is going to be a ten note away minor seven. So it should be a ten note away minor seven. And how do I know that? Because if I count it down this way, remember there's no fault line between these two. The fault line is between these two. So this relationship is the same. It would be five four three two. So from the D, it would be two notes away. 12 minus two is 10. Therefore, going the other way, it would be a 10 note away. So if I saw this shape going from top to bottom, it would be a two note away, which would be a major second. Therefore, bottom to top is a 10 note away minor seven. All right, let's go back to the prior one and say we're gonna go back here 
and say this is going to be the sixth. So the sixth of the Phrygian, mode number three Phrygian, is going to be an eight note away minor six as it normally is for a minor. Uh, a min now, if I look at that and say, well, if I look at that shape, it looks like from top to bottom, I'm going to just, my mind should start to be thinking that looks like a, a, a major third, unless I'm under the fault line, which is on this, between these two, which I'm not there. How do I know that? Because it would be five, four, four note away, major third, inverse 12 minus four would be an eight note away, minor six. So when I see that shape going from top to bottom, that would be a four note away, major third. Hopefully I said major. The inverse would be an eight note away, minor six, therefore. Let's go back to the fifth, back to the fifth. Now we're gonna be on the fifth and the fifth is going to be a of uh, the fifth of a Phrygian is a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I go from the B to the E, that's a five note away perfect fourth. The inverse would be 12 minus five, which would be a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I see that shape, I'm usually thinking, all right, from top to bottom, that's a five note away perfect fourth, unless I'm over the fault line and therefore from bottom to top must be a seven note away perfect fifth. And now let's bring it back to the, the fourth. So the fourth is going to be uh, this A here. All right, so now we're gonna say the fourth is going to be a uh, five note away perfect fourth. How do I know? Now I've crossed the fault line. So the shapes get a little wonky here. So I'm gonna say, well, if I've measured from the A, it would be up here five and then 10 nine eight seven so that's a seven that away perfect fifth this shape you would think it would be back here to get from a to back one but no it's up because of the kink in the tuning therefore 12 minus seven is five the inverse is a five note away perfect four so when i see this shape i'm usually looking from top to bottom e to a five seven that away i mean five seven that away perfect fifth bottom to top five note away perfect fourth all right, then I'm going to go back to this one. This is going to be the third. And so that goes from here to here. And so that's going to be a third of the mode three mixolydian is a three note away minor third. How do I know that? Because if I count this way, again, it's kind of wonky. I'm going over the fault line. So it'd be, it'd be five, 10, nine. Normally, if I see the shape counting from top to bottom, I would think that's a 10 note away uh, minor seven. But no, it's actually a nine note away uh, because of the fault line, nine note away major six. And therefore the inverse is 12 minus nine, which is a three note away minor third. So if I see that shape, I'm like, okay, that's a nine note away because of the fault line major uh, six inverse 12 note away, then uh, the inverse three note away minor third. All right, let's go back to the prior one. Uh, going from this E to like the F, which is kind of a reach here. See, because of my acoustic guitar, I'm kind of hampered by the guitar there, but I should get the electric, but I'm not doing it. I'm just gonna, just gonna suffer. <laughs> That's gonna be then, uh, yeah. So that's gonna be, what is that? That's gonna be a three note away. What am I on? I'm on like the second now. That's gonna be a second, which is a, uh, a one note away minor second, because I'm on the Phrygian. One note away minor second. How do I know that? Because if I count up five and then 10 would be up here, 15, uh, hold on a second. No, that's right. 5, 10, wait, 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So that would be an 11 note away, which would be a major 7. And 12 minus 11 is 1, which would be a 1 note away uh, minor 2nd. All right, so that's the gist of that. Then let's, I was messing with... Uh, these over here the other thing i was doing is trying to once again just pick pick 
these are all the different combinations. If I just choose three notes, and I imagine that I'm always going to have the first note, and then I'm going to tack on an ending so that I'm trying to make a song, a progression of chords or whatever, that starts and ends on the first, on the first of whatever, whatever I'm in. So last time I ended off, so I'm just going to play with these progressions a little bit and see if I can convert these. So if I was on, I'm going to try to stay away from the fifth maybe because that's the, uh, the Locrian. So maybe I, maybe I was on like, this one has all fists through it. Let's try this one. So we're going to say, not that you can't make the Locrian work, but it's a little bit more complex and I'm tired. So if I was on the Phrygian, the first of the Phrygian is going to be the E minor. So now I have to know that the first of a Phrygian is the E minor. How would I, how would I know that? Well, if I know that the Phrygian is the third of the relative major, and I know that the, the two, uh, three and six are minor relative to the major, then I can say, okay, that's going to be a minor chord. And beyond that, I can say the Phrygian not only if I know the Phrygian is distinct, then of course, when I make that chord, I can also say, what's the distinctive thing about the Phrygian that is different than the main minor? And that is that it has an interval of a one note away minor second, which means that when I build my chord, I could, like if that's the E, that's the distinctive step right there. So if I build my chord, I can reach up. That's what I can do on the minor that I can't do. If I, if I didn't know that this was the that this was the Phrygian, I wouldn't know that I can. If I just played this as though it was a minor, I would know that I had a minor third, but I wouldn't know that I have available to me that minor second, which I could play up here too. And then I and then and then I go to the sixth, and the sixth is the the Ionian, uh, or is the C, and then the C is the question is, well, is it going to be major or minor? If I didn't know that the sixth of the Phrygian was making a major, how can I get there? I can say, well, I can do my little math thing and say, well, the Phrygian is three, minus one is two, plus six is eight eight minus seven modes is one. So therefore I'm going to call the sixth of the Phrygian, the one mode Ionian mode. In other words, related to the major scale, the one, four, five are the ones that, that are major versus the two, three, six minor. Therefore this will have a, a major third instead of a minor third. Beyond that, all the other intervals I know are, are if I want them to be in the same key will be the major intervals perfects and major all the perfects and major so then, and then i have the the two that i want to go to the two is, is going to be e f so that's going to be an f so then i can play it this way it's probably easy for me to play this way and then the f do i do a major or a minor well if i don't know that the two of the phrygian is a major i can say well the two is the Phrygian is a, a third is a third mode minus one plus two it is uh, two plus two is four that gives me what I would call mode number four otherwise known as the Lydian mode if all I know is it's mode number four I can say well the one four five of the major scale is major so therefore I know it's going to be a major chord instead of a minor chord but if I know it's a Lydian I have added information about the different interval related to the major scale which I believe is, uh, that's the one with the fit, that's the one that has uh, the fourth, a weird fourth to it, right? So let, but I won't get into that now. So we'll say then the one E, which I could add to get it a Phrygian sound. And then I had the six, which I said was the C. And then the F. Back to the E. So the e. What did I say? E. And then the six is the C. It's a 
little kind of hard to make it sound Phrygian that way because it's like you have the C, you know, the C and the F kind of pull you into feeling like it's in the key of C or something possibly, but. Six was a C. Let's say, let's put a D in there with a seven. Seven, three. Let's try this one. So now I'm going to be like, okay, the one is the E, the seven is a D. And again, I could say, well, one is E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Well, it's a D. Do I make it a major or do I make it a minor? Well, if I don't know, it's the Dorian. I, or if I don't know, I could say, well, then I'm on mode number three. Minus one is two plus seven is nine. Nine minus seven modes is two. That would be the second of the major scale. And I know that the two, three, and six are the minor chords of the major scale. Beyond that, I know it's the Dorian mode which means that it's not only a minor chord, but it also has the distinctive uh, major sixth in it, right? If I want to get that detailed on it, but I'm just going to play major or minor, and that's a minor. So it's going to go boom. We got that. The seven is a Dorian. And then it goes to the three. Well, what's the three? Well, I have E, F, G. It's going to be a G. Do I play a major or minor third if it's the third of the Phrygian? Well, the Phrygian is the third mode, minus one is two, plus three gives me five, and I know that the fifth of a major scale, one, four, five, is a major, therefore it's going to have a major third. Beyond that, I know that the fifth is a Mixolydian mode, which actually has that distinctive minor seven instead of a major seven, if I wanted to get that detailed. So I can say, okay, they're going to say E minor. wasn't on the A, what was, what was my third? Um, uh, a G.
second. Supposed to go to a D. E minor. D minor. G. E minor. E minor. E minor. E minor. Next one. The seven is this one has the same one seven and then we add the four. So I'm like, all right, what's the four? I'm on the E F G A. It's gonna be an A. And the A is the fourth of a Phrygian major or minor. I could say, well, it's the third mode minus one is two plus four 
uh, four, five, six. That would be the sixth mode of the major. I know that the two, three, and the six, I mean, the two, three, and the six are minor modes. More specifically, it's the Aeolian, so it's going to be a minor mode. So same starting point, E, D minor for the seven, and then A minor. All the minors, this is going to sound heavy, man. The heaviest minor to start and end it with all minors. It has all minor intervals. D is the lightest thing you're going to get. it there.